and welcome to the Nutrition Diva podcast. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel, and today I want to share with you a conversation that I recently had with Dr. Rachel Vanderbilt. Rachel is a relationship scientist whose research examines how we communicate in our romantic relationships. And the reason that I invited her to join me on the Nutrition Diva podcast is to discuss common issues that come up between partners that have to do with food and nutrition such as how to handle it when your partner doesn't seem to be willing to support you in making healthier choices, or how to approach a partner about choices that they're making that you think might not be healthy for them. I also want to invite you to check out Rachel's podcast, The Relationship Doctor, where she shares evidence-based research on how to live, love, and communicate with your partner. And now here's my conversation with Rachel. We are welcoming a new host to the Quick and Dirty Tips family. Rachel Vanderbilt is going to be now hosting the Relationship Doctor podcast. And today she's joining me to talk about how our intimate relationships sometimes impact our food and nutrition choices and vice versa. Welcome to the QDT family, Rachel. Hi, Monica. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to get to chat with you today. Uh, It's great to have you on the team and here with us today on the Nutrition Diva podcast. And uh, so often people that I'm working with who are trying to make healthier choices about food or lifestyle are often surprised that when they make changes, it sometimes creates uh, waves in their relationships, particularly a partner or a spouse that they live with. But I thought you would be the perfect person to talk to, to help give us a little bit more insight as to what's sometimes happening when it feels like somebody who should have our back, who should be there to support us, actually isn't being terribly supportive. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really tough when we're trying to make changes like that to kind of determine how our partner is going to respond to that and kind of the best way to support our partner in the opposite case where they're trying to make a change and we're kind of resistant to it. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, we can look at this from both sides of the equation. And, you know, making changes to longstanding habits is hard enough without this extra layer. So I think this will be really helpful for people. Let me share with you some of the scenarios that I hear from people all the time, and maybe a few of them, and you can help us unpack them a little bit and understand maybe what's really going on in these situations. You game? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, here's scenario number one. You tell your partner that you've decided you want to make some changes in your habits, maybe in order to lose weight. And then they tell you, oh, you don't need to lose weight. You're perfect the way you are. Now, that would seem like a very supportive thing for a partner to say, but sometimes that's not helpful. So what's really going on there? You know, you hope that the sentiment behind a comment like that is that your partner just wants to let you know that you don't have to feel like you have to change on their behalf. Mm Mm-hmm. And so just because the intentions behind the sentiment are benign or not intentionally harmful doesn't mean that you won't feel like it's a little bit dismissive of your efforts. And so your partner may perceive you to be perfect the way you are, uh, but you obviously feel like you'd like to make a change and lose some weight in this scenario, right? So how do you respond to the partner who who kind of invalidates your your attempts or your what you just told them? A good response to this might be to just let them know that you appreciate the sentiment that they feel that you're perfect the way you are, but you are going to be taking steps to lose some weight for yourself for whatever reason that might be, right? And you can be open about those reasons, like your personal reasons for that. I think you said something really important there, and that is pointing out to your partner that you want to lose weight for you. You know, sometimes we need to say, I appreciate, you know, the unconditional acceptance, but this is really something I'm doing for myself and not necessarily to win approval from other people. And I think that's really important to acknowledge. Yeah. And it's going to change the dynamics potentially in your day-to-day experience. And so it's normal for your partner to be a little bit resistant to that and be nervous about your motives behind why you're trying to make a change all of a sudden. Um, And so understanding from their perspective that this is changing their life a little bit too is important to acknowledge. And so you can explain to them what specific changes you're making and maybe even how those changes might impact them and their lifestyle and what they're going to be expecting on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, some of that may be a little bit of fear of, uh uh-oh, how is this going to affect me? What's what's this going to change in my life? So preparing them a little bit for what that might look like could kind of dissipate some of that anxiety. 
Absolutely. And just, you know, being upfront about having those conversations now. So this is an ongoing process. And as you're making changes, you know, your partner may be more or less, you know, okay with the changes that are going on and opening the dialogue to say, um, you know, these things are working for me and have been really helpful in helping me meet my goals. But, um, you know, this has really been making me feel tempted or hindering my progress and achieving my goals and and having that open line of communication for them to also say the same things to you like, hey, this has really not been working for me and I'd like to have, um, you know, these foods during dinner. Um, Is there any way we could have a swap? So if you're eating two vegetables, I'd like a starch in there, you know, Mm -hmm. something that is an easy swap to make mealtime okay for everyone. Yeah, I think often we expect that someone who's that close to us, who's been living with us for 10 years, 20 years, is just going to know what we're thinking or what we need. Um, We expect a lot of mind reading to go on there. So sometimes the simplest thing is just to actually say what it is that you need or you're wondering. Exactly, exactly. There's no way your partner can actually read your mind about these things. And so an open dialogue about changes and things that are working and not working is a really great way to make sure that everyone's on board and okay with what's going on. That makes perfect sense. But, you know, you alluded to something that sort of sets up my next scenario. You tell your partner that you're trying to cut down on sweets and snacks, and it would be really helpful for you if you would not keep those foods in the house so they weren't there to tempt you. But your partner has no desire or no intention of changing their own habits, and they don't see why they should have to go without those foods just to support you. I can kind of see this dilemma from both sides, but how would you handle that? Yeah, so this can be so frustrating, right? Your partner isn't interested in changing their habits, and they may feel like they're not really responsible for your inability to control yourself around right. tempting foods, right? Um, and so for you, it feels really unsupportive. Like, why can't you just not bring the temptation into the house? I have a really hard time making healthy choices when there's unhealthy ones in the area. And what can what can we do to, to come to a compromise, right? Um, and so again... Open communication. That's my motto. You really want to have a conversation about this um, with your partner. So you want to frame the conversation from how you're feeling, so not criticizing what they're eating, right? And you say, I'm trying really hard to eat healthy, and I find myself being really tempted by the snacks being kept in the house, and I don't expect you to follow my eating plan and to not eat those things, That's not fair to you if you're not willing to make those changes. But I really could use your help to try to stick to my goal of eating healthier. So could we keep those snacks in a spot that isn't the place where we normally keep snacks? Mm -hmm. So I find myself having a hard time when I go into the cabinet where we keep our snacks and there's unhealthy stuff in there that I'm tempted to eat. Um, And, you know, partnerships are all about supporting our partner and making maybe small sacrifices to help them reach the goals that they have. And so it is just a small sacrifice to maybe keep those snacks in a place that isn't the norm, right? That's not in the snack cabinet where you know you can go to eat the snacks you want when you want, but that your partner can go in that cabinet and find the healthier choices that they're looking for, right? And that's, I think, a small compromise to make so that you can eat, you know, you can eat healthier and your partner can eat the snacks that they want. Another compromise that sometimes works is just agreeing that that those snacks will be kept out of common areas like maybe the family room or the TV room. Say, look, if you if you want to have your snack, could you have it in your den or your study or in the living room? And we could make the television room a, a no snack zone or something. Yeah, negotiating those compromises. Yeah, because those are really small choices that make a big difference for people trying to reach their goals. Um, and, you know, even even better would be to n- not have them in the house at all. Like, hey, you go to work and during the day you can eat whatever you want. Mm-hmm. But when you come home, it would be really great if this house was a, a little bit of a healthier zone for all of us, you know. But it's not it doesn't always work like that. Well, another thing I heard you say uh, in your suggestion was instead of kind of dictating the terms, this is what I need for you to do, asking like, what would you be willing to do in order to support me? And, you know, framing it that way kind of gives your partner a little bit more opportunity to kind of be the hero. Absolutely. It's a conversation and allowing them the opportunity to come up with a solution can Mm -hmm. also feel like That was their choice that they made. They're willing to make that compromise. You feel good because your partner is willing to come up with solutions to help you achieve your goals. And they feel good because you're not dictating 
the solution to the to the situation. But, you know, as you say, all relationships require a certain amount of compromise and sometimes even small sacrifices that we're willing to make for our partner's well-being or our partner's comfort. But I think sometimes when people get into this situation where they're trying to negotiate this particular territory, the person who is advocating for the healthier choices kind of feel like their side wins because it's objectively healthier. And the the side that their partner is arguing for is objectively less healthy. Therefore, they should actually, their point of view should actually prevail here. Right. And I mean, I totally understand that viewpoint, right? Like, I just want us as a family to be healthier. Right. This would be better for you too. Yeah. It's not one-sided. But at the same time, no person can tell another person what they can and can't do. And they can't force the other person to make changes if they're not ready to. And people are in all different mind frames, right? That there are lots of reasons why they may not be prepared or ready or willing to make those changes in their life right now, right? If you're really stressed at work, sometimes that overload of stress that you're feeling makes it really difficult to make changes in your habits at home. Um, and you're just not in a mental place to be able to deal with those changes that you're trying to implement. So even if they're objectively better, there are lots of reasons why people aren't really in the frame of mind to make those changes at that moment. And that doesn't mean they never will be. But you're absolutely right. It is impossible to get people to embrace change that they are not ready to embrace. And sometimes we just have to be patient and, you know, accept the fact that our partners are actually separate human beings who get to run their own lives. <laughs> exactly. And really, we can only change ourselves. We're only right. responsible for the things that we can control. And another person is not something we can control or should control. So, you know, being careful to not try and dictate how your partner lives their life, is it's difficult but important. So let's just look at it quickly from that other partner's point of view. So let's say your partner tells you that they want to have less junk food in the house and they want to eat healthier meals and more salads and fewer french fries, but you're perfectly happy the way things are and don't want to change. What's your advice for that person, the person on that side of the equation? Yeah. So this is really difficult, right? Your partner wants to make a change. You are not ready to make the same change perhaps, but you feel like maybe that's threatening your ability to eat and live the way that you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe that's a change to the entire dynamic of your relationship, particularly for people who find that like eating out or making a really big extravagant dinner is the way that they spend quality time with their partner. Mm -hmm. That can be really tough to navigate. And so if you'd like to be a supportive partner, right, you kind of have two options. One of them is you can take the opportunity to make the change, right? Uh, research has shown that when both partners are making health health conscious decisions and they're working to make those changes together, that they both will have better outcomes. So, uh, you know, that's one option. But if you're not willing to make those changes, you can help them meet their goals, right? You can help them to eat healthier or to work out more or whatever it is that that healthy change they're trying to make is. And so um, it's really important that we do try and facilitate those uh, goal attainment from our partner. Whatever Uh, those goals are, right? Like we would support our partners if they decided they wanted to go back to school or they wanted to pursue a job change. We're going to try to be there for them. And sometimes those changes are going to impact us, whether positively or negatively. But, you know, change can sometimes be threatening just all by itself. Exactly. And so, again, part of this is recognizing that you may have to make some small sacrifices. Um, and you start by asking, how can I support you make the change that you're trying to make, mm-hmm. right? That's the biggest question you can ask in a moment when your partner has come to you to say that they're trying to make a change. How can I help you? How can I help you achieve your goals, right? Then you actually have to listen to the answer. Right. And try and come up with – if if the answer is something that you're not really willing to take on, right? Like I want us together to be eating healthy meals. And you say, I don't really want to make that big of a change, but you know, if you're, if you're going to be preparing the meals, I'm willing to eat whatever you make, right? Or if I'm responsible for making the meals, I'm going to try my best to meet your nutritional needs, whatever it is that you've decided that you're going to try and and eat, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe I'll have a healthy, uh, you know, I'll swap out a side for something I want more or, Again, keeping the snacks in that alternate location so that your partner's not tempted by it. Or like helping your partner prepare their healthy snacks 
at the beginning of the week, right? So they're pre-portioned, accessible, ready to go. And then I think the biggest thing is acknowledging when you notice that they're meeting their goals, right? So, oh, I, I, I see that you're, you chose an apple just now. I think that's such a wonderful choice. Great job. Sounds a little corny. You could probably come up with something less corny to compliment your partner, but acknowledging when you notice that they're meeting those goals is a great way to support your partner in that moment. Yeah. And I would add to that, that sometimes it's safer to acknowledge behaviors that you observe, like that, that they are fulfilling as opposed to commenting on their success with weight loss. Cause sometimes that can be kind of loaded territory. So is there some guidelines about what, what sorts of things you might want to notice and acknowledge? Yeah, that's a really great point. It kind of depends on your partnership. Some people, if they're losing weight, or if they're eating healthier specifically to lose weight and you comment, you're looking really healthy right now. You're looking really great. It seems like your hard work is really paying off Mm -hmm. for you in the way you want. Probably okay. Um, If, if it's a stranger, okay, I, I never recommend commenting on someone's weight. I, I would always say, maybe you could say you're looking good or something like that, right. but you don't have to say, uh, you look like you've lost a lot of weight because you never know why that might be. You really never know, yeah. And sometimes that's not welcome. Exactly. Not welcome at all. And I, it's important that we're careful about the words that we choose because you never know what someone's going through. With a partner, those motives are... A, probably a little clear. So your Mm -hmm. partner came to you, they said, I'm looking to eat healthier because, and so acknowledging their hard work in reference to the goal that they're trying to meet is okay. Right. Right. Um, But I think noticing objective things that they're doing, like I noticed that every day this week you went for a run and I'm really proud of you is a really easy way to just acknowledge something that they did. And so I would always recommend acknowledging tangible things if you're a little bit nervous about commenting on that goal attainment or the broader picture of the of the goal. So it seems like, you know, nobody should object to a partner wanting to help them be healthier. But do you think sometimes the reason partners are so resistant to the changes that we want to make is that they think it somehow reflects, it's a judgment on their own choices or how they look or what they weigh. And maybe sometimes partners might actually be guilty of this, of saying like, oh, I want to eat healthier with an ulterior motive that they're actually trying to change the partner's behavior or health. What's going on there? Yeah, so that's so tough. It definitely is a dynamic that happens. I'm trying to make changes, and it seems like I'm making changes for myself, but maybe I have this motive that if I'm making changes, you'll see that and make changes yourself. Mm -hmm. I never recommend secret tests like that. So if you're the partner trying to do that, you should find another way to address a concern about your partner's health than that, because again, your partner's not a mind reader. Um, But also... Uh, it's really easy to feel fear in a relationship for all sorts of reasons. If you're not particularly comfortable in your relationship, right? You're you're nervous that uh, your partner is looking elsewhere. Maybe I mean, mm-hmm. you know that that they're not happy with you and the way you look and the dynamics of your relationship, and they're trying to better themselves for someone else. That's a huge fear, and it feels risky for your partner to want to better themselves. But I'll tell you that. Even if you're worried about your partner for whatever reason, you still want to support them. Being a supportive partner is imperative to your partner feeling seen and heard and validated. So even if you're worried by your partner's change in behavior, Mm -hmm. you can express that. You can say, hey, is it because of this? Are you trying to send me a message? Let them tell you, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll be like, yeah, you know... I thought maybe uh, by being healthier that you may want to be healthier with me, you know, and I'm a little bit concerned about your health and open the door for that conversation. But I think it's important that we acknowledge if we're feeling uncomfortable or nervous by the changes our partners are making, and that's okay, but that not every change your partner is making is because of you. Yeah. In fact, fewer of them probably are about us than we imagine. (laughs) Yeah. It's really easy for us to kind of be self-obsessed a little bit and feel like (laughs) everything is about us. Not everything is about you, right? Um, And your partner can make changes for themselves that literally have nothing to do with you. You know, for all you know, they went to the doctor and there was some comment that was made about some number and it was the impetus that they needed to make the change. Um, And they didn't want to tell you to concern you, but they, you know, decided that they wanted to eat a little better. And that's okay. You can support them in that, right? 
Well, ultimately, I would think that supporting our partners in being the happiest, healthiest versions of themselves can only strengthen our relationships. And if you have some lingering fear that somehow if your partner gets healthier, it's going to weaken your relationship, that's probably something that needs to be out on the table and discussed. Absolutely. Yeah, that's an underlying issue that goes beyond just making changes. And those conversations are important to have, too. So lastly, Rachel, if you give us one more piece of advice, what is the most effective and most appropriate way to approach a partner when we do have concerns about their health or the choices that they're making? You know, we see, we feel like we know enough about nutrition and health. We see what's going on there and we're worried about them, Uh, but they're not worried about it at all. Is there a way to open that conversation in a way that doesn't backfire? So it's tough because I can never guarantee to you that your partner's not going to respond poorly to a commentary on their behavior or um, their health, right? It could be a really touchy subject for people, and often it is. Um, So if you're trying to have that conversation with your partner, you've made the decision, I'm going to broach this subject with them. Um, You sit down and you just say, hey, I just wanted to talk to you about something that I've been a little bit worried about. I've noticed whatever behavior or issue, right? And I'm I'm really worried about you and I'd like to have a conversation about that and see how they respond. If they respond really poorly, there's not a lot you can do about that unless, you know, they're willing to have that conversation with you. But really it depends on kind of the root cause for your concern. Mm-hmm. So if it's about dietary issues, it's really hard to come to them and say, um, you know, this is bad behavior because- you know, it's not, it's not necessarily bad behavior. There's lots of reasons why people eat the way that they do. So you really want to try to not be critical of them and say, you always do this, whatever behavior. And you don't want to say that's bad, right? You don't want to impose your judgment on them, but you just want to express that you've noticed whatever behavior it is and that you're concerned about it for their health and would like to discuss ways that you can support them make better making different choices because ultimately you care about them and their well-being exactly and hopefully they can hear that but i think it's possible that that having someone close to you come to you with that kind of a concern is sufficiently alarming and threatening that it is hard for you to hear the good intention behind it but for the person trying to make that outreach i would imagine that even if your partner reacts badly in the moment that doesn't mean that you haven't set into motion something that could yield benefits in the future. But we may not be able to expect an instant confirmation or or buy-in. Absolutely. And if someone responds really poorly in the moment, it could be that they just weren't expecting mm-hmm. that conversation to happen. And so once they calm down, it, there may be an opportunity to revisit the conversation when the energy has been reduced in the room a little bit and just say, I know that um, you didn't respond great when I brought this up last time, but I really do think that this is an important conversation to have. Um, and I, I am worried about you and I would like to support you better. How can I help you? Right. And then we have to realize that we have to allow the other adults in our lives to make their own choices. That's exactly right. Again, you cannot impose your view of what ought to be on another person. Mm-hmm. So even if objectively they're eating bad food, they're eating junk food, um, you can't tell them that they can't do that. It's just that that's not the way it works, right? Yeah. Um, you can you can support them in making better choices. You can provide you know healthier alternatives in the house. You can make sure that they're readily accessible in the same place that the the other options are. Uh, you can do the same sort of thing where you keep the the um, poorer choice food is <laughs> somewhere separate and healthier options in the place you normally go for food to try and make it like second nature, that they're going to get a snack and those options are there or whatever it is. Um, And you can provide just tangible support in that way to try and encourage better choices, whatever that might be. Yeah. It's uh, it's so much more complicated than just the nutrition or the food choices. You know, it really gets tangled up in a lot of of different things. So I really appreciate you taking some time with us just to um, talk about these issues that are so common, that come up so frequently, and that I think sometimes people really don't know how to handle. And I would encourage everyone listening, um, and I'm sure they've already 
thought this to themselves to check out your new podcast, The Relationship Doctor on the Quick and Dirty Tips Network for more insight and and your ongoing take on how we can make our relationships healthier and stronger. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. This was so wonderful. Changing your behavior and making healthy choices is a real challenge, and negotiating these sorts of situations in a relationship or family or household can make it even more challenging. No matter what's going on in your particular household, it can be really helpful to have the support of a community that's working on the same goals. If healthy weight loss or weight management is something that you're working on, I'd like to invite you to join me and Brock Armstrong at wayless.life. That's wayless.life. And of course, you can access the entire archive of Nutrition Diva podcasts, as well as Rachel's new Relationship Doctor podcast in your favorite podcasting app or on our website at quickanddirtytips.com. The Nutrition Diva show is produced by Nathan Sands. It's edited by Beata Santora. And the Quick and Dirty Tips team also includes Michelle Margulis, Emily Miller, and our intern, Claire Freeman. Thanks so much for listening. And remember to eat something good for me. 